Hello and welcome to the 41st episode of the Red Sox and Filter Podcast. I am your host, Patrick Green, joined as always by my lovely host, Dave Latham. Dave, say hi to everybody. How's it going, everyone? Less than one week till baseball, even if it is uh, backups pitching to college kids. I'll take what I can get. Yeah, I, it's really close. What, Friday, February 22nd is, is when we start. Is it? At like Northeastern. Yeah, this Friday. Cool. Like that's the first game. Yeah, Dave. Breaking some right. news to you. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew it was also, happening soon. Didn't have a it's actual soon. date. It's that soon. Yeah. We got to start like delegating the spring training recaps. <laughs> that's how close we are. But yeah, joining me as always also is our lovely producer and co-host Chris Drozzi. Chris, say hi. Hey. Hey, uh, so, just so you know, your, your video is really <laughs> tripping me out. Like, it, it, it like, skips around because uh, when it talks, it, it kind of does this thing where it rolls around to different people. Do you want me to cut off? No, no, you can keep going. It's hilarious. I kind of like when it's like all of a sudden your face <laughs> pops up on my screen. It's great. Okay, I'll keep it going then. And then uh, lastly, we have a special guest, a Red Sox unfiltered writer, um, Perry Dominici. Say hi. Yep, long time listener, first time caller. Very excited to be here. Um, <laughs> looking forward to it. Looking forward yeah, to doing it. The, the classic Northeastern versus Red Sox rivalry in a week here. So, it's yeah, fun. it's uh, <laughs> should be very exciting. Uh, Perry can be found on RedSoxFilter.com. He writes awesome articles for us. Does a lot of good recap stuff, and we're excited to have him as a first timer come on here. So, again, Perry, thank you for being here. It's it's going to be a lot of fun. I promise. Yeah, I really Hopefully. appreciate you guys. Yeah. So we're just going to get in here, and obviously it's been kind of another slow week in, in Red Sox news, mm-hmm. despite the fact that spring training has, has or the camp has started. There really hasn't been a lot of compelling storylines, but we're going to do the best that we can. Um, we've been grasping at straws all off season, and uh, we, we, we've been hidden hidden on most of them. So let's start with uh, Chris Sale and Alexander Bogart. So Chris Sale. Um, there have been reports that the Red Sox are engaged currently in some sort of preliminary extension talks with him. Um, obviously, sales contract is up at the end of this year. He's been with the Red Sox for the past two seasons. has been invaluable, but he's also had some injury issues. So the idea is, uh, I think John Henry said something to the effect of, of regarding the John Lester contract talks in 2014. We made him basically he said effectively we made a mistake with Lester. And um, he kind of bridged that by saying, we don't want to make the same mistake with Chris Sale, despite the, they called it minor health risks. So I want to ask you, Dave, what, what your thoughts are um, with these Chris Sale rumors going around? So I absolutely agree. Henry did make a mistake with John Lester, but I don't think the best course of action is to overcompensate for yesterday's mistakes by screwing up tomorrow. I love Chris Sale. He's a fantastic pitcher. But I don't think when you look at a guy who always had trouble staying healthy late into the season, basically missed the entire second half of last year, and it looks like he's made out of like tissue paper, <laughs> I, I really don't think that's the type of guy that you want to invest it, like into his mid-30s at a, high, at a high salary. Like he, He'll definitely have uses like a first half of the season arm, and he'll be great doing that first half of the season. But you have to expect a bit of a dip off. I wouldn't go anything more than twenty million over like a year over like three years for him, and I that's not going to be enough to get Chris Sale. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I in a perfect world, if you could get him like high and annual average value, but on a short term contract like three or four years, perfect. But it's going to require a lot to to retain Chris Sale, and it's going to require a lot of years. So, um, uh, what about you, Chris? What were your thoughts on this? Is it really going to require a lot? Uh, in terms of length and, and, and yeah, it's probably going to be like a $200 million contract. Do you at, really at think least. it's going to be a $200 million contract? I, I do. I'm just judging by this free agent market. They kind of have Chris Sale in a bad spot because if you really think about it, uh, there's not really much, you know, intrigue for going on in the open market. Dallas Keuchel's still sitting out there. Uh, Patrick Corbin was smart and took his money when he could. Um, but I, for, for a guy that that gets hurt, um, at least past couple of years, he's worn down. His whole career he's been wearing down throughout the season. I just feel like it's better for Chris Sale to take an extension at a discounted rate, not 
as club friendly as it is right now, but not a thirty million dollar contract AAV. That just doesn't. I, I just don't see him getting that. And I'm in Dave's camp where I feel like they shouldn't um, mess up tomorrow because of what happened yesterday. But it's the Red Sox, and who knows what they're going to do because their philosophy changes every five minutes. So, yep. I could definitely see the Red Sox <laughs> theoretically. Uh, I mean, Chris Sale theoretically taking a discount to stay in Boston, but it's it's going to still be a hefty price tag. Like you mentioned, Corbin and Keiko as your examples for the free agent, but Sale's in a whole other class. And Corbin got $140 million over six years. Granted, I think he's a little younger, but Sale has had a track record of being Cy Young caliber without actually having a Cy Young for so many years now that I think Sale's going to cash in big, and I think it will be over $200, 300000000 million. And I expect Machado and Harper to clear the, at least the $200 million threshold in the coming weeks. Um, what about you, Perry? What, what are your thoughts on a potential Chris Sale extension to the Red Sox? I mean, I certainly love the idea of him staying with us. He's been our ace for the last two years now, but we have Mookie coming up in 2020, which is going to be a huge contract. Obviously, he's the guy we want to keep around. And then, I'm not segueing too early, but then we got Xander as well this, in these contract extensions too. They're both a lot younger than Sale. They've been cornerstones of the franchise coming up in the farm system, whereas Sale came over in the trade with the White Sox. I like the idea of keeping all three of them. It's certainly not going to happen. And for me, I'd like to keep the young position players versus Chris Sale. As we mentioned, he wears down every uh, about halfway through every season. You see the wear and tear come on him. His numbers dip. He takes stints on the DL. It's tough to see them competing with that market. Like the, He's going to be the premier pitcher that everyone's going to want to pay. And if we pay Xander, we pay Mookie, which I think we will, it'll be tough to keep sale as well. Yeah, and I think that's a great point. And, and we've talked about it at Bogarts with Bradley, with Martinez potentially opting out, with Porcello and, and Sale. So there probably are going to have to be concessions made. Obviously, it's hard to know what that number is because we don't know how much the Red Sox brass is willing to cough up and go over the luxury tax. But you have to assume that they're going to have to make those concessions and somebody's not going to get signed. So to kind of segue here, what I want to ask you guys is Sale and Bogarts are both hot on the extension talks because they're both free agents after the season. Who would you rather uh, extend if you had to pick one, Sale or Bogarts? And I'll start I'll start with you, Perry, because you seem to you were touching on the subject a little bit. Yeah, by the tower, when Sale's ready up for his new contract, he'll be 31. I mean, Xander will be nowhere near that. I think you get more value out of him just because of his age, and we've seen his numbers go up every year since uh, moving from third base to shortstop. It's really been his more comfortable position. And I just like the idea of having him in our infield. And we have David Price. You said Porcello is coming up. He'd be a lot cheaper than Sale. He's still a great pitcher. He could be top two in the staff if Sale does leave. And, yeah, I just like the idea of Xander in our infield. Yeah, that's a very good point. Not to mention, uh, in, in general, starting pitchers are a lot more fragile than position mm-hmm. players. So, uh, And especially Sale, who's been kind of looking like he's been breaking down. Stick figure. So that, that's a stick figure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, what about you, Chris? Uh, I'm taking Bogarts. No explanation needed. <laughs> no explanation needed. <laughs> just Bogarts. I, I, All right. I, I just, my, my thing is, is I, I'd rather put the money in a, in a position player who hasn't had an injury history. At least I don't think he's had an injury history off the top of my head. Um, no, like he had the wrist thing in 2017, but nothing. Didn't he that. get hit for that though? Wasn't he like, Hit on the wrist. Yeah, yeah. Got hit on the hand. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't well, even. Didn't he, have, he had an ankle thing last year, right? That plugged him a little bit. Well, that's because um, JD Martinez tried to kill him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're right. I mean, it's not like recurring, like long term issues. Right. Is what, so what you're saying. So basically, I would be comfortable with going to Bogarts and giving him like one twenty five to one fifty because he's not Machado's uh, caliber. I don't think, but I, I just feel like. I would rather put if I had if you were giving me 150 million dollars over the course of X number of years and I had to pick somebody I'm picking Xander Bogarts uh, if, if, that, if the numbers were if the numbers are equal I guess. yeah and I think that I don't know if they'll be equal just because I feel like Sale as a pitcher is a lot more valuable than Xander Bogarts is as a player but if you're talking about like long term projections then Bogarts is younger um, and he's a position player and he has less health risk so I bet you the contracts will be comparable maybe and like. Per year, Sale will get more, but Bogarts and Sale, like if if you had to like both squeak out terms of negotiation, they'd be about equal. Uh, what about what about you, Dave? What are your thoughts? 
Yeah, um, I'm going bogey all day on this one. Sale, I love you, buddy. He's been great for us. But at the same point, you really just got to look into the future and you don't want to hand out lifetime achievement contracts. And Xander Bogart, he's the younger guy. He's the healthier guy. And he's the one that has a brighter future three, four years down the line. I'll take Bogart's any day of the week. Good point. Uh, so it's uh, four out of four. We got Xander Bogart's. Let's tell Dave Dombrowski. This was a that, that, that was that was an unenthusiastic debate. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not a lot of uh, controversy uh, yeah, there. Not a lot of meat on that bone. No, no meat on that bone. Can't be a debate um, in this position. Exactly. <laughs> so, still staying on the topic of Chris Sale. Chris Sale had some comments that came out two, three days ago um regarding Dustin Pedroia who's working his way getting back to hopefully being healthy and an uh, active contributor for the 2019 Boston Red Sox he said in quote to Christopher Smith of Mass Live who has also been a guest on this podcast um but he said uh he's one of those guys who can never rule out I dare you rule him out actually because he's out to prove a point this year and that's a scary thought so um yeah Chris Sale is very high on the prospects of Dustin Pedroia coming back and being a very, very valuable member of the 2019 Red Sox. What are your guys' thoughts on this, Dave? Um, I'd love for that to be true. And we've we've yet to have a Dustin Pedroia who was bad and healthy at the same time. So there, as last we saw, there's still a good player in there. I don't count 2018 for anything. He played in like three games. But in 2017, he was still a good player. Hopefully that guy's still in there. I mean, there's no reason to expect Pedroia to be an MVP player again. Like, that's not going to happen. But like Dave Dombrowski said, if you can get 125 games of average second base production, that's going to be huge because last year we didn't have a second baseman. We had a gaping black hole of suck. So if Pedroia can just be average and let uh, Holt and Lynn play and give him some rest, that's all I hope for. It honestly, I, you know, I'm not old. I'm I'm just turned 21, but it makes me feel old that Dustin Pedroia is 35 years old. Like that, that's crazy to me. Yeah. But um, I want to go over. I want to ask a follow up to Dave. Um, in your hierarchy of second baseman, where does Dustin Pedroia rank on terms of who you trust right away to be the starting second baseman? Are you going Holt? Are you going Pedroia? Are you going Nunez? Or uh, you mentioned Zoe Lynn. Um, so yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, give me your rank. Of the guys on the roster, like, assuming Pedroia is fully healthy, ready to go, I'll have him start opening day. But after that, I'd probably want some rotation of Holt and Lynn behind him. Because Holt's great, but he wears down if you make him play every day. I don't want to do that. I want to keep him fresh. And I'm big into Lynn's sanity. Anyone who's listened over the over this offseason knows that I think Zue Lynn's a real major league player. I don't think he's an everyday second baseman, but I think he can do a good job in utility, uh, giving Pedroia some rest, and filling in around the diamond as needed. So I think between the three of them, he can do a good job. And Eduardo Nunez, um, uh, he's, he exists. Sort of. I was going so, to say, you f- you think uh, Lynn's going to make the uh, opening day roster? I mean, yeah, probably so I not, ask. but he has so many options that if you need him to come up, he can. Also, I, I think we need to... You know, Lynn Sanity is a little cliche. Jeremy Lynn kind of <laughs> po- popularized that. It's the and tsunami, I'm giving it. Man. I'm taking it to the it's one the who tsunami. deserves it. You got it. No, I feel like the tsunami is a much better fit for him. Well, I'm know. going Lynn Sanity. You going I can't Lynn be Sanity? Ruled. This yeah. is going to be a big conflict on the Red Sox and social <laughs> Twitter account when you're when you're saying Lynn Sanity and I'm saying tsunami. Look, the people that follow us have to expect the account to just be yelling at itself half the time because you and me <laughs> have a lot of back and forth <laughs> takes. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever noticed that, Perry, but Dave and I both run the account on Twitter. Yeah. And we don't always agree. And there will be like threads of us going back and forth <laughs> and people calling us out for like just being completely hypocritical of our previous statements. Like, but, uh, make up. Yeah, it's like, make up your mind, pick a lane. It's like, no, it, the other one <laughs> tweeted the, uh, that one. <laughs> Well, I love the thing reactions from the same Twitter account when they play. Like, you just read yep. two tweets in a row, just completely different reactions. And it's like, oh, yep. <laughs> That's us. Yep. Well, we got to yep. do a poll, though. Z- tsunami or uh, Linsanity? Perry, uh, Tsunami no. or Linsanity? What are you going with? Uh, I like Tsunami. Linsanity was taken. Jeremy Lin took it by storm. 
I feel like it resonates with him. We could go Linsanity 2.0. That doesn't fly off the tongue. I'm going to go Tsunami. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. This is this is, this is is working in my favor so far. Uh, what about you, Chris? I'm going. Uh, I'm abstaining. Well, what are you going with? I said I'm, I'm abstaining. I'm keeping my so vote. So I win, basically. Yeah. I'm just, I, I didn't need to type right that one. That was that a fun one, crowdsourcing. So. Yeah. All right, Dave, we'll just call him Tsunami on the Twitter account. I'm glad we could settle that. No, oh, I'm, let, I'm letting democracy speak. Uh, I just tweeted it out. Okay, I, I will. This vote. is this is where I will make my voice heard. Okay. There we uh, go. Okay, but um, back on topic, Chris Dustin Bedroya potentially coming back. Um, how do you feel about his health and his contributions in 2019? Dustin Pedroia failed me as a baseball player in fantasy baseball. So I... <laughs> you draft him last year? I will personally never trust Dustin Pedroia again. Uh, no, I actually I drafted him like two years ago. And it's a okay. te- it's a league that we keep the whole team over and over again. And, um, Dynasty? Is that what it's called? I've always wondered, Dynasty, what, I've always wondered what that word was. <laughs> Learn something new every day, I you're, guess. You're in the league. <laughs> <laughs> it's not called the, a dynasty league. It's just a league. This is how it was positioned to me. It was not called the dynasty league. I was just told this is what's going to happen. League. Okay, that now makes sense. I now understand what that means. All right, cool. Uh, that's Chris's <laughs> dumb moment for the day. Uh, so, so like what everyone in the league is calling a dynasty league. Now, they now were you know not, why. Nobody has called it a dynasty league. Not one person have I talked to. They all just like, hey – that weird league that we keep everybody every single year. That's literally what everybody calls it. So <laughs> it's the official name. <laughs> yeah. The um, official name. Yeah. So he, he failed me. So I'm never trusting him again. Okay. Oh, this isn't um, good. Very that was substantial. Completely unbiased there. <laughs> he cost me money, man. What about you, Perry? <laughs> what about you, Perry? How how you feel about Pedroia? And give me your thoughts on like where you think he ranks with Holt and Nunez, and I guess Zuby Lin in this second base uh, <laughs> battle we got going on. I mean, despite how since how long it's he's uh, how it's been since he's played consistently consistent baseball, I still think he is the best glove of the group. I mean, he's been a Gold Glover basically his entire career. He makes insane plays. Um, the bat, I'm not sure. It's hard to tell. He hasn't taken lock pitching in so long with his short stints in 2018, but. I still love him as a glove. If we can get him in there in the rotation, just have a sure hand out there. And like you said, just get like productive at-bats from him versus having Nunez just make some really boneheaded plays out there, which is just so fun to watch. But yeah, I like if Pedroia can stay healthy, I like him out there a lot. Yeah, it's weird to think about that Dustin Pedroia at the age of 35, who's been through a ton of injury issues, is still like definitively the best fielder. Yeah among that group that's that's mind-boggling to think about but but it's true and i and i agree with it and i'm um, on the opposite side of the bias as chris because dustin pedroia is my childhood hero so i'm always pulling for a comeback so you're gonna draft him round one of your fantasy round one pick one first <laughs> overall yep dude three, every three, year three, 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 three. every no. year when what? i do fantasy drafting i have to do some crazy thing and take some guy like way before anybody should uh, and it and it to, much to the anger of everybody else that I play with, so they should they be happy about mate. that. You're taking a yeah. you're taking a bad pick. Leaves more good players for everyone else. No, no. Give so, them free money. so what I do is is I take a guy that like everyone's probably gonna want when my team's filled out, and I'll take him way earlier than you should. It just makes everybody mad. Oh, uh, okay. okay. I see. I see. I thought you were like taking Zoe Lin in the first round. <laughs> uh, no. It's chess out here. So. I think I did. Yeah. <laughs> I think I did in one of my leagues that's super deep. I took David Ortiz in 2017. That worked. Oh, out. I think. Wow. Wow. That was hey, bold. So, that was bold. So, so my roommate, uh, we did our fantasy baseball league last year. He took. Uh, he doesn't listen to this because he's a Yankees fan and he hates everything that deals with Red Sox and so should. He should. Hate, but um, he must he love should hate you. listen to this. That's what he should do. <laughs> He follows the account though, and he gets uh, and like he's a really big Yankees fan. So, but he took Gary Sanchez round one last year. Mm. I hope he's not listening to me right now through the door. But yeah, <laughs> that was uh, that was a beautiful pick. <laughs> I just I just like wasting my last picks. That's really what I like to do. No, I I I have some fun with my last few picks. Oh, yeah, I exactly. can't wait for fantasy baseball now. I secured Johnny Manziel at the end of my uh, fantasy football draft this year. It was a big pick. I that went to Jacob Hollister. Paid off dividends. Yeah. 
I, I don't even know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's uh, the Patriots' backup tight end. Me and um, you know, the Pat site I write for, we did a fantasy league, and we were hyping ourselves up for uh, Jacob Hollister, mostly ironically. And I drafted him. I'm like, league's over, boys. I won it all. I get the last. <laughs> Did you? Oh, you came in last. Oh. Yeah. Wasn't my year. Was not didn't my you have year. To, didn't you have Dalvin Cook? I had Dalvin Cook. I had Lev Bell. It was, I think, no, yeah. I didn't have Fournette, but I almost took him. I was, it was I had a good Fournette thing I didn't. And Cook first I took Bell in the first so. round. And then I had Rodgers and then Shady McCoy, who had, like, I think Josh Allen had more rushing oh. yards than him, so that was nice. Uh, not not a great year. <laughs> no, not at all. Not a great year for all of us. Um, but getting back on topic, so we've been talking about Craig Kimbrell probably every single episode of this offseason, and mm-hmm. damn it, we're not going to stop here. Uh, <laughs> can't stop, stop, won't stop. We I'm going to stop. stop. Won't stop. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to edit Tom this whole Warner. part out. No, 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 no. This is, this is relevant. Um Tom Warner came out and said today that the Red Sox are unlikely to sign Craig Kimbrell. Um, well, we've been hearing like contradictory reports all year. It feels like we're all off season. Um, but I feel like the brass has been pretty committed to the fact that they're not going to re-sign Kimbrell. But um, here we are still talking about it. Red Sox have no solution for the bullpen, really, um, besides just grasping at straws and hoping for the best. So this... Um, Will probably be unsettling to somebody, to some crowds, but at the same time, Kimberly's going to cost a lot of money, and as we talked about, they have to extend a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to start with you, Perry. Um, what? And you're a fresh voice because Chris, Dave, and I have been going back <laughs> and talking about the same Craig Kimbrell stuff should, each and every week. You we should start and end with him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, I know. But uh, what were your thoughts about Craig Kimbrell this off season? And do you think that the Red Sox are ultimately going to regret probably not resigning him? Um, I have a lot of faith in Ryan Brazier, and I honestly don't know why. Um, I think it's just blind at this point. But the back end with Brazier and then Barnes and Thornburg and maybe Carson Smith if he ever comes back to life. But it's just like not having Kimbrell back there is such an uncertainty for what we've had these past couple of years. He had a couple of stints last year where he looked shaky. There's a couple of playoff performances that weren't so great. But he's still Craig Kimbrell. The contract he's going to – necessitate is going to be tough to mash as you said with all these other extensions we have i think immediately it will look like regret because we don't know what the bulk pen is going to look like but with that contract in the long run i think it's a good thing to pass up on because he's still going to demand the kind of money he's always had his entire career good point and, and i feel like it's interesting as base like i mean i've been closely watching baseball for over well over a decade and a half probably which is most of my life but um Craig, uh, like, there's been this shift where teams, like, in the Moneyball era and, like, post-Moneyball where teams would not just, like, throw anyone back there. They wouldn't invest a lot of money in the bullpen. They thought it was just, like, a crapshoot, so they just kind of went with it. But as, you know, the Royals kind of set that 2015 team, like, basically built on just having an all-star bullpen, mm-hmm. we've kind of had this comeback where relievers are more valuable than ever. And that they're the ones who are getting contracts while like everyone else in baseball and free agency is not. So I think it's the Red Sox are kind of reverting back to that strategy, the money ball strategy where they can just compile whoever they they want and just hope for the best and kind of rely on some minor league guys. And they're saying that the bullpen's more fungible and that they're going to believe that guys like maybe Colton Brewer or Bobby Pointer or Travis Lankins are going to be or Josh Taylor are going to be contributors um based on their triple a numbers so that's uh that's a uh, it's been interesting to see how that's kind of developed um but chris wh- what about you what are your what are your continued <laughs> thoughts on the craig kimbrell saga i'm not talking about craig kimbrell um i'm gonna talk <laughs> right, about so, how <laughs> tyler thornburg has looked really good uh according to what i've been reading on the twitter verse um so I I'm, saw that too. I'm, I'm excited to see that but i think um just overall, Keep in mind, it's February. Everyone spring looks training really embellishments. Good right now. Yep. You know, guys, except Chris Sale. Videos through Chainlink. I don't look good right now, yeah. so we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Chris Sale uh, also bulked up. Don't forget about that. He did. One. He did bulk up. He looked like he may have been a half a pound more. Yeah, um, he went from ninety to ninety-five. He's really exactly <laughs> really really bulked up there. Uh, no, but I I, I like I, I I like the idea. Well, I don't really like the idea that Dombrowski is betting on the guys that he brought in. Uh, I mean, Craig Kimbrell was one of those guys, but he's not going to, 
He's not going to pay him to come back. Um, so he's betting on like Tyler Thornburg and Carson Smith and uh, all these other guys that they've, they've just kind of taken off the scrap heap. Um, and hopefully things work out. Yeah, kind of going yeah. with just throwing a thousand darts and hoping one of them sticks. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, you, you throw you throw it against the wall, um, and uh, you know something will stick. Statistically speaking, one of them will probably not be a disaster. More or less <laughs> although I, I, although I am very bullish on the Matt Barnes dart, I think that's going to hit a bullseye. Oh well, like yeah, that. but you you need more than that's one it. good arm, and Matt that's Barnes it. is like the only safe one. I'm a big Brazier guy, but even I'll admit there's there's some uncertainty there. Maybe this yeah, we is talked the about year. his BABIP last week, 198 yeah. last year. Maybe, mm. maybe this is the year that the Red Sox stop using a dominant closer and try to buck the trend of using a dominant person as a closer. And they just, like, let Heath Hembree get three outs in the ninth inning. <laughs> <laughs> and use Matt Barnes all over the place. Yeah. Just get really uh, weird with it. They should. I mean, that's the like, key. Like, I mean, no they close, should. No closer Count, by committee, uh, but let's be real. Andrew Miller is better than Cody Allen. So that formula works somewhere else. So why don't we just put our best guy rolling around wherever you want him? Cody and, uh, Allen is better than Heath Tampa Bay Rays, too. Yeah. 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 Maybe Heath. Had, well, I mean, like we've seen. The I am a OK with the, the idea. I actually I love the idea of having our best reliever pitch in the situations that matters. But you need a, a good number two to like. Go in the ninth, and unless it's Brazier, we don't have one. Because I refuse to believe yeah. in Thornburg until Let, I see. Let's be it real. Look, I like, a Me guy too. like Fernando yeah. Rodney can close games. I think anybody else can close games too. <laughs> Fernando Rodney, he of like the what? He of the four or five ERA lately. Yeah, they will fall from grace for him. But all right, Dave, uh, what, what are your what are your also continued thoughts on this Craig Kimbrell saga? Uh, my biggest thought is that the closer we get to uh, opening day and the le- the more Craig Kimbrell does, the more I think that Hernandez is going to be in the Red Sox bullpen come June with him hyped for it. But I really wish they weren't giving up on Hernandez as a starter already, which I know they are. It makes me sad. Ah, this is a perfect transition because you know what MLB.com came out with today, Dave? Oh, I know. I've been waiting for a while, and I've been <laughs> angrily, passively tweeting at MLB Pipeline on the official account quite a bit about it. You have. Um, so, yeah, the MLB.com came out with their top 30 Red Sox prospects today. So it's super exciting. I'm going to briefly list the top five, and then we'll, we'll debate it. Hopefully we're all brushed up a little bit with it. But number one, Michael Chavis. I don't think that's a lot of – very surprising. Number two, Tristan Cassis, first overall pick last year. Um, and then you got Bobby Dow back. Little, uh, you know, he, he's got some power. Four, we got Darwin's in Hernandez, who, you know, Dave just talked about. And five, Jay Groom. And I think Jay Groom was number one last year at this time, number two. He um, would have been number one. That would have yep. made sense. Yeah. So, yeah, obviously he's been injured. So, um, yeah, I, I want to get your guys' opinions on, on, on the list as a whole, but. I mean, we'll really concentrate on the top five because those are probably the most impact. Um, just for relevant purposes, Durbin Feltman's ranked number 12. Um, my boy Cutter Crawford is ranked 20. I love that guy. But, uh, yeah, Dave, um, l- l- let me hear hear your thoughts on this list. So uh, the top five, if we're just keeping it to that, Chavis at one, that makes sense. Uh, he's he's not the highest upside. He's never going to be a superstar, but he – has this, he has an incredibly safe floor. He's practically in the news already. He's if if we wanted him to, he could probably make it uh, start opening day in Boston, and he'd be fine. But he'll spend most of the year in Pawtucket. Uh, he's he's going to be good, but not but not great. Cassis at two kind of surprised me just because he hasn't played like more than literally three games in the minors. He got hurt last year. He can definitely make it to number two with a strong year, but to me, I had him five on my list because I need to see a little more first. Dahlbeck, fantastic power, fantastic glove. If everything breaks perfectly for him, he's better than Chafis and Casas, but he can't hit a curveball to save his life, Strike strikes out too much. High ceiling, low floor, and in my mind, more likely to end up closer to the floor. He's more Mike Napoli than he is Aaron Judge. Uh, Darwin's and Hernandez love that dude needs to learn how to throw strikes. And that's probably going to end him up in the bullpen. 
but he has a chance to make it as a starter. That's why he's up at four. Personally, I like him more than MLB.com does. I had him as my number two prospect. Groom has the best stuff of just about anyone in baseball, like majors or minors. If he can stay healthy, he's a top 10 pitcher in the league, but he's been hurt basically since we got him, and he's coming off of Tommy John, won't be ready till midway through the season at best. And when he comes back, it's just going to be about getting him work more than it is making him look good. He won't be like anything close to what we thought we were getting until at least 2020. Yeah, and I think this is a convenient time to promote your – you have your top 30 uh, prospect list for the Red Sox, right? It's top 30. I do. Yeah, yeah go 30. check that out on redsoxandfilter.com. It's, it's some good work, Dave. And he, he – you, you said it in what, like December? Uh, January. Cause J- January, they- okay. When they did their uh, top thirty, uh, top one hundred, I thought they were also going to release like team by team top thirty, and they didn't. So I got mad at MLB d- Pipeline, and I did it myself. Yeah, uh, Dave is really well versed in prospects. He's kind of made it a goal this off season. <laughs> so uh, you definitely check that out, guys, because he's got some compelling stuff on there. But yeah, I also I, have a scouting report on almost every guy in the top everybody. thirty. There were a few they had that surprised me. And a few guys yeah, that aren't. He, yeah, check those out too, because Dave does a good job. Um, you know, kind of definitely leading uh, the prospect prospect section of the site. I feel like actually you're the only one who's on the <laughs> prospect section of the site, but you do a great job. <laughs> Can I have one uh, second to talk about the not uh, the not top five guys? You have the floor. All right, cool. Uh, Anthony Flores finally usurped C.J. Chatham as the top shortstop in the system. Long overdue. Love you, buddy. And I love Flores. Chatham, not a big fan. Uh, Jaron Duran, number 10. The world loves him. Uh, he was our seventh-round pick last year who wasn't supposed to be anything special. He showed a lot of talent. If he can prove it wasn't a one-year fluke, he's probably top five in our system next year. Uh, another guy like that, Brandon Howlett, 21st-round pick. And he really showed great stuff last year. He's a third baseman, which everyone in our system's a third baseman, so that's going to hurt him, but... Right now, he comes in at 15, right around where Danny Diaz is, above Nick Northcutt, which is good for him. So I think we're going to hold on to him. Maybe that makes Northcutt expendable. I would, I'd would expect to see Northcutt traded probably, maybe Diaz, but I'd rather we hold on to him. And just to keep it quick, um, well, Donnie Baldwin is still our top-ranked catcher, even though Cole caught him is better. That surprised me. So, Yeah. Um, definitely... A good, good. You know, you know what surprised me about about this list? Now, maybe not surprised me, but I think it's interesting to note that what three of the Red Sox first, th- the first three picks the Red Sox took in the 2018 draft are in the top 12. You got Feldman at 12, you got two. I don't know what that says about the Red Sox system, or if this is in very intriguing draft class in general. We we had a fantastic I'm, draft. Like Cassis and Decker are there just because of their names because they both got hurt like a week. Into yeah, their Red Sox play. tenure, mm-hmm. but Feltman's yeah. been exactly as advertised, and those two guys I just talked about, uh, Howlett and uh, North, and not North, uh, what's his face, Duran, Cole caught him. Oh. caught him too, caught him too. He's been great. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, Duran like came out of nowhere. Howlett came out of nowhere. They've been great. Uh, Gilberto Jimenez wasn't a draft pick. I don't think. I think he was international free agent, but still, he's eighteen, and he's really uh, come up through the system. There's another guy in here. I think it's uh, Brian Bello. He was an international free agent two years ago. We signed him for like 12 cents, and he's really put up some good numbers in the GSL. He hasn't pitched in LOL or anything yet, so he's still very much a work in progress. But for and what he doesn't we have a picture. Together, and he doesn't have a picture on MLB.com. That's how raw he is. <laughs> he does not. <laughs> on the top 30 list. It's just a face that's going in and out of colors. It's really, it's really cool. Uh, but yeah, let, let me uh, let me get your opinions on this list, Chris, if you have any. Do you have anything to offer, Chris? My thing, to, uh, the only thing that I had to offer was the, the Tristan Cassis thing. Like he played three games and he's number two. I don't know if that speaks to him or if that speaks to the Red Sox farm system. Uh, not really sure which one that speaks more to, uh, but that's my really my Probably only thought lighter. on it. Okay, um, what about what about you, Perry? Um, what were your opinions on this list? 
I think, as you were saying, with um, how well our, dra- our 2018 draft fared with the rest of it, I think that's a testament to both how good the draft was and if you look at the Detroit Tigers, what Dombrowski does to a team because they had their window when he traded for everybody and now they're at like an Orioles level of roster. And that could be coming for us with all these extensions we have coming up. We definitely have more cornerstone pieces than them. But as for the top five, I think um, my only wild card is Jay Groom coming off the uh, Tommy John. He's great stuff, as we said. Um, he could be anywhere from like one to ten or wherever based off this injury, how well he comes back. But I'm excited to see him actually stay healthy. And I think we'll definitely see uh, some Michael Chavis in the majors this year, just filling in for when guys need rest. I'm excited to see him play at a major league level. Yeah, and I think you did bring up an, a, a very relevant point that Dave Dombrowski is, based on his track record, is, is a farm system killer. Yep. And uh, before this draft class, it kind of, Felt like we were moving in a direction, and this draft class is very raw, so I'm not going to make any sweeping declarations. But this is definitely encouraging, I, I suppose. Um, and but I, I am worried, as you said, with all those extensions and the state of the Red Sox farm system not being that strong. Like what what the future has in store. Um, but the difference is, with the Red Sox, he got his rings. With the yes. Tigers, he never did. So the Tigers, you know, they spent all their bodies <laughs> on these awful contracts and they were trying to capitalize this win now mentality they got nothing for it they got beat by the red sox in the alcs in 2013 which was their old their golden year probably and that's the i think the furthest they got i don't did they i think so no no they made it to the world series one year but they got swept was that yeah yeah, yeah, you're right that was like the maglia ordonia's year i I can't remember which year it was it might have been might have been 20 no i 12 maybe no that can't be right oh <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll do i, we'll I do completely blocked the 2012 season out of mind i genuinely <laughs> yeah. don't know what happened that was not there. a fun year at all <laughs> we stopped watching in june um but yeah here for a while <laughs> exactly um yeah i just want to talk about cutter crawford one more time um i got to see him in greenville this year uh when i went down there and he is a guy from florida gulf coast University, same college as Chris Sale. He was drafted, and he got drafted in what? Like the 16th round, very late. And he kind of emerged on the scene in Greenville with like a 296 ERA, 120 strikeouts, only 34 walks and 112 innings. He started 21 games to the tune of the 296 ERA. He was incredible. And he even went to um, Salem, and he had some really good peripherals there. It wasn't as strong. But he's implemented that cutter, which he did in his senior year. And ever wow. since then, cutter has been relying on the cutter and he nice, is nice. yeah you see what i did there. that was an awful transition but anyway first one, uh, he, you're the first one to ever make that transition by the way yeah, no, no, I, I know no one no ever used ever. that before that was no. original <laughs> don't give it <laughs> but yeah crawford i i am excited about him um he's definitely ascended through the ranks and the fact is like you're gonna look and you're gonna project these people and we can talk about raw stuff and he's got good raw stuff but the peripherals are there. Like if you're going to project going forward, what he's been able to do in a short amount of time is turn a lot of heads and he's using that. Like, I, I, I don't want to make the same pun, but that cutter has really allowed him to work off his other pitches and kind of have like that full palette, that full complement of, of pitches to be an effective pitcher, at least at the minor league levels, the lower levels of the minor league. So definitely looking out for him in 2019 he was ranked like he wasn't. He was unranked coming into the season. So the fact that he's twentieth now, that has me giddy. Um, but yeah, I think that'll conclude our thoughts on that prospect list. Unless I know Dave, you're very passionate about. It. I don't know if you have anything <laughs> you final you want to add to that. Uh, I'll add one more about Tanner Huck. Um, he was our first round pick in 2017, and the first year and a half didn't look that good. Because he was a two-seamer guy, and we drafted him, and we said, hey, you know how your best pitch is the two-seamer? Don't use it anymore. (laughs) I don't know why they did that, but for some reason they did. And then midway through 2018, they realized, hey, we're stupid. How about you use your good pitches again? And he did, and the second half of the year, his ERA dropped to 261. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but the peripherals were good. So I think Huck, with another year to actually pitch to his strengths, I think he's going to really... Uh, I think he's going to really improve. I don't know if he's ever going to be like a major league starter just because his command's a little erratic, 
and his stuff isn't as good as a guy like Hernandez where he can get by with some bad command, but I think he's definitely going to see his stock rise as the year goes on. Thank you for that, Dave. Um, Good stuff, good stuff. And we're actually going to transition to the final segment here, and then we'll conclude. But uh, Perry's going to get his first time playing some rapid fire. Ooh. Here we go. Don't you have any rapid fire is, Perry? No, but I'm excited. Luckily, Chris over here will give you the full breakdown. Chris, I'll let you take it away. This is his brainchild. I gotta explain this again, dude. (laughs) Harry's never done it before, man. Every single week, I gotta explain this. There could be new listeners. There could be new listeners, man. You gotta keep doing it. Yeah, I suppose. Okay, so the basics of this is you get like it's they're all quick questions, mostly yes or no, or this or that or whatever, and they're supposed to be quick answers. And if you want somebody to explain, you just say, "Hey, explain that." Um, You get like a good 15 seconds to explain yourself, so be concise, or we're all going to yell at you and be upset. Um, so this is Sounds the, like a lot of fun. Yeah, exactly. So this is our rapid-fire segment uh, sponsored by Nobody, uh, because we can't be bought. So th- I've got one, two, three, four. I got five of them this time, so I'm a little light because it's been kind of quiet. Um, some of these are MLB. Some of them are just random questions. Um, so here we go. Wait, are you going to ask the toothpaste one? Is that is that on your list? Oh, dude, that was six questions. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> That's an um, important one. <laughs> so, would you go to free agency or sign an extension in this free agency market? Anybody can answer. I don't care. I'm not facilitating that. I would test free agency. Yeah, I think I'd test free agency as well. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. I'm a follower. I'm signing an extension. Yeah. Screw you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I don't want to be like Aaron Nola and get four year forty five million when I probably am worth forty five million in a single year. Same for Luis Severino. Or like end up like Evan Longoria. I the, the or Jose Ramirez. I, I the name keeps going. They they get like these insanely undercut prices. I know it's safer, but wait, I'm not even supposed to talk or go off on a tangent, but yeah. <laughs> I forgot the rules of this game. Alright, so Pat explained there. On to the next one. Uh with CC Sabathia retiring, do you enjoy the retirement tours that baseball players have been doing lately? No. Yes. Yes. Who, Dave, who's... expose your nihilism. I mean, okay, I'm, I'm well, a no okay. too, but I like Dave's exp- explanations for things better. It's one thing if this is like a generational talent, like uh, you know, I like I'm gonna go tell my grandkids I saw like David Ortiz play or something great like that. But you're CC Sabathia. You had a pretty nice <laughs> career, but let's not act like you're this great superstar legend. You're like you're you're an o- you're an overweight pitcher who's only known because he's pitched with the Yankees and it's funny to see a fat guy throw a ball. <laughs> Bartolo Colon says hello. Yeah that well Bartolo Colon is a different thing. CC's a yes, good pitcher, yes, but he's yes. he's not a legendary guy by any means. Like get over yourself, CC. You're not getting a tour. <laughs> He's gonna get a tour. It's happening this year, so get ready. I refuse to acknowledge it. LeBron wished him farewell. That's how you know you're something. Yep, that's my standard. Good for LeBron. He also gave J.R. Smith a career for the last decade. Doesn't mean he's any good. That's a fair counterpoint. I have nothing to <laughs> respond with. <laughs> uh, moving on. Ice tea or lemonade? Ice tea. Lemonade. Not familiar with the rapper Lemonade, but I like Ice T's work. <laughs> really? Can, can I? I'm lemonade. mixing them I both. Answer. I'm mixing them both together. That's what I'm doing. So, can I? Can I ask Perry um, his his rationale beto- for iced tea? Because I know in the South <laughs> yep. we usually don't drink iced tea. We drink sweet tea. So, are you on the sweet tea train? Or are you on the actual iced tea? Well, I was I was thinking sweet tea. My brain has been manipulated since I've been down here. But yeah. definitely sweet tea over lemonade. I mean, All right, now I've got a question for you two Southern boys. Oh, jeez. Well, there's yes. a difference between iced tea and sweet tea? Oh, dude, well, there is okay, a difference. So unsweet tea or sweet tea? Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, no, so there's there's sweet, sweet tea. So, Same Dave, thing except you just dump like a gallon of sugar in one of them? Basically, Minimum. That's yeah. exactly Dave, right. Dave, yes. go okay. to the, if you drink iced tea at all, go to the store, find Pure Leaf, and just buy a sweet tea and then like a regular lemon iced tea and you'll taste the difference. There is a difference. It tastes it doesn't huge it difference. tastes different. Oh, yeah. I know there's a huge difference between sweetened and unsweetened iced tea, which I'm imagining is the no, same deal. Like even like the lemon iced tea that's sweetened tastes different than sweet tea. Huh. Yeah. Okay. It's a whole thing. Also, do you guys 
Do you guys have Chick Fil A's up there? Because I saw Perry sipping on some Chick Fil A earlier. It's um, the only thing I've eaten for the past four months, and I don't think I'm going to make it much longer. <laughs> yeah, like you should probably thing. be dead already. <laughs> yeah, it's not great, but you know, options are. Hey, running. mine is Panda Express. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, Chick Fil A. You guys not, got Chick Fil A? There's one. Yeah, probably, we got them. Yeah, they're they're, they're around. Cool. They're someplace. Not they're super expanding. common, but they exist. Yeah, they exist, but. Not, not too many. We have one every other block here, so. It's kind of like, like, like us. <laughs> it's kind of like us. Exactly. It's kind of like us and Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. We got Dunkin's here. They, they literally put a Dunkin' Donuts inside of a Dunkin' Donuts and call it a day. Um, <laughs> so, uh, moving on. Which Girl Scout cookie are you going for? Wait, I'm going to have to repeat that because my cat just knocked something over. Uh, <laughs> which Girl Scout cookie are you going for? Thin Mints. Thin mints. Uh, not the thin mints. The like peanut butter one with the chocolate. The tagalongs. I'm with you, Dave. Yeah, tagalongs. I'm with you. No, no explanations warranted. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not thin well versed good. in Girl Scout cookies enough to uh, to go here. <laughs> really? I don't really know what a thin mint is, honestly. I just said it because I heard Perry say it. Piggybacking it sounded my great answer. Uh, Did, yeah. <laughs> you don't know anything about Girl Scout cookies? No, look, I, I, I know they exist, and you get it from Dude, the Girl Scouts. But gir- I don't know Girl Scout about. cookies are the best way to waste $5 and get cookies that are $0.35 cents a piece that are yeah. definitely not worth $0.35 cents a piece or however much they are. Uh, I did no, math. I know, I know about the idea. pyramid scheme. I just, I, I don't <laughs> the pyramid remember. pyramid scheme? <laughs> I don't remember the, the taste the of the Girl Scouts do this on a well. pyramid scheme. <laughs> I, I call the Girl Scouts a pyramid scheme? I don't think so. I think we have to do something. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's going up. It's going up. Uh, moving on, since we're not really passionate about Girl Scout cookies, uh, beer, beer, wine, or liquor? This is in honor of the, uh, the birthday from last week. Yes. Thank you. Beer. Am I, I do it all, but beer. Yeah. Yes. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Yeah, it's under twenty one. Am I gonna yeah. get it? Go for it. Yeah. Uh, you, you yeah, can just come taking down my door. Okay, I'm... juice boxes, water, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. or lemonade. Wait, I thought we were all twenty one. Oh crud! Uh, me... <laughs> yeah, I'll go with beer out of those three. You no, 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 dude. dude Not dude. that you'd know. Don't incriminate yourself. I mean, Don't incriminate I mean, yourself. Juice boxes. I mean juice. Yeah, there you go. All right, cool. Free sun. <laughs> apple cider. Right. Go with apple cider. <laughs> yes, because then nobody actually knows what you're talking about. <laughs> Oh, so what did you say, Dave and Chris? What was your? I think Dave just answer? said yes. Yeah, my answer was all of them. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes. no, I, I agree with that. I'm going with liquor, but that's besides fact. Uh, Look, uh, yeah. I just turned 21, as you guys know, and I've uh, it's been fun, man. Five of the last six days, I've been in some kind of alcohol-induced state, and I'm trying to return to being a normal human being. <laughs> <Gone well. laughs> I'm functioning. There, there are meetings for this. Uh, I did. It's- it's not alcoholism. It's called you know, turning twenty-one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Once you get that diploma, it's a problem. <laughs> yes. Once you get out of college, yes. it's a problem. All right, I got four more years, and I'm there. Three more. Savor them, man. Savor them. <laughs> the, the, the final question here hits hits home. Uh, it hits it hits home a lot. So, do you squeeze the toothpaste from the middle of the tube or the bottom of the tube? I'm glad you included this. Bottom. I, I I would say probably the, the middle. The middle to the top, honestly. If you do middle... I'm you, oh, you are wrong. I'm going with the box seat. You're wrong, dude. You're wrong. You waste so much toothpaste. Like, I, I'm not even going to waste and explain on you because there's no answer you could give that would make that the correct. I, I Look, okay. You need some context here. Chris went on a diatribe on Facebook against your wife, right? For <laughs> doing the same thing that I do. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to explain this without anybody prompting me. And then right? I, yeah, so and I, co- I, took... I commented, I commented this, is a, this is a rapid fire question. I'm glad we got to this point. I, I was cleaning the bathroom, all right? And I have my toothpaste and she has her toothpaste. And uh, her toothpaste looks like it's been wrangled by like, I don't know, some machine and twisted and turned and all this other stuff. And mine's just like neatly, neatly uh, squeezed from the bottom. And I'm <laughs> like, this is ridiculous. Uh, so the divorce papers are currently working. So, <laughs> so <laughs> that's where that's going. <laughs> that polarizing of an issue. <laughs> no, Do you guys pretty... not share a toothpaste? Um, 
we do and don't. It's weird. I, I don't know. There's like three. Okay. There's probably like three tubes. What's weird is we have probably three or four tubes of toothpaste just chilling in our bathroom. So I don't really know if we share toothpaste or not. Uh, okay. Are you a Colgate guy? No, I'm a Sensodyne guy. Oh, me too, man. I have really sensitive teeth. They're very soft. Yeah, I, I have bad teeth, man. I told you last week I have bad teeth. Not hillbilly style. Just bad teeth. I don't remember that conversation, but I will now. It was a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Is it. That sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, I forgot this is my thing. <laughs> I was waiting for you to go off. Uh, that's it for Rapid Fire this week. Uh, as always, sponsored by nobody because we can't be bought. Sponsored by back, Colgate. Back, back to Pat for the Sp- weather. Sponsored by Colgate. Sp- sponsored Perry, by did Colgate. You that? Did I, you enjoy I, that? I did not come on here expecting to talk about toothpaste and Capri Sun Pacific coolers, but uh, here we are. That's it will get better when there's actual baseball. Actually, yeah. Look, next week, next week, if you want to come back on Perry, there will be actual baseball to talk about. And we will still find a way to talk about Colgate toothpaste. And nothing will stop us. To our listeners who actually made it through an entire offseason of this, congratulations, guys. It's about to get a lot better. Yeah, it's, I I mean, hopefully. Or worse. We've had some good... Or worse. What if people like this kind of stuff, man? People love the toothpaste. Yeah, people mm-hmm. do love toothpaste. Okay, but okay, I would like to update before we depart here. Three votes. 78% of the people are with me. Solidarity. Tsunami all the way. And Lynn Sanity's got a, a mediocre 22%. What do hey, you have to say, so, Dave? So since... Uh, I'm, I'm going to speak for Dave. Since we, uh, since we talk... Well, since we do the, the baseball thing... Um, Small sample size. That's a very small sample size, too but small. like the, the, the percentages are so high for, right now. Nope, that, too small of a sample size. No, it's not like the percentages nope. are just so different right now. If it was like okay, 60, you, you, 40, you're I'll probably be like, like twenty of those twenty three votes. <laughs> I have not He's voted. I have not accounts. voted. My, no, I have not voted. My hands have been here the whole time. You can see me this time. I have not been. I have not been on Twitter. But I will vote, and I will make that percentage higher. I'm just happy to be on the right side of history on this one. Exactly. <laughs> Perry and I will go down on the right side of history. But yeah, guys, that's actually going to do it for this episode of the Red Sox and Filtered Podcast. Uh, Dave, you got a departing thought for the listeners? Uh, yeah, Darwin's and Hernandez is a starter. Goodbye, guys. <laughs> Chris, trade Sandy Leon. Bye, guys. For what? Any thumbtack? Bag of baseballs. <laughs> Lint? The Marlins' okay. 40th ranked infield prospect. <laughs> I honestly question if, if Sandy Leon would be more valuable. Uh, what, what about you, Perry? Dustin Pedroia will hit more than one home run this year. Okay. <laughs> hot Full prediction? Hot take. Hot take, hot take. And Dustin Pedroia will be your first round pick in fantasy baseball? Right? Yes, yes. I, I'll, I'll need and- Sometimes I would. Okay, I'm going to need like proof of that. You're going to have to send me a picture. Okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll put it on the Red Sox and Filter Twitter account <laughs> to make, make sure you hold your word. But yeah, um, thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. Um, as always, you can find us on a variety of platforms, including Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher. And if our wonderful partners the uh, or affiliates, The Grueling Truth, decide to post it, you can see us on iHeartRadio. And among other platforms. But yeah, guys, go Red Sox as always. We got our first organized professional baseball game on Friday. It'll be against Northwestern, so look out for that, guys. Thanks for listening. need to just do like a blooper I'm gonna, real I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna create a blooper like... <laughs>
I don't know about that. I mean, the, the, my blinds are open. Sorry, that's what I meant. Uh, I meant my blinds are open. I get you. I need to be more articulate. The blinds are open. The window is closed, but yeah. Just like the word me. potential. Like, I'm marrying a Yankees fan. Pat's a Jets fan, oh, you know. What? Oh, she's yelling at me now. <laughs> <laughs> what? You don't want them to know? Be proud of yourself. All right, so, so Dave, that tells me everything I needed to know about why 9.56 p.m. pot putting away happened. <laughs> I now understand it. I, yeah. I get it. <laughs> Just heard too much of the Red, Red Sox. You had to drown it out. <laughs> yeah, I understand it now. I don't eat ramen anymore. Oh, too that's much sad. So- sodium. Can, but I'm not going to respond. What, what 20-year-old oh. worries about, or 21-year-old, however old you are now, 21-year-old, what 21-year-old worries about salt intake? <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of them. No, I don't I'm think so. I'm getting ahead of the game. I'm getting ahead. Of, I'm getting ahead. I think I best, actually, it, it really is the best thing for you. Let me tell you. The ra- as sodium? your dad, as your dad, <laughs> getting rid of ramen <laughs> is the best thing for you. <laughs> a ramen a day keeps the doctor away. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs>